Hello, this is Wolfram Miller from Speed for Projects talking. Welcome to the how to for the critical chain in an Excel. Um, it's all about how to do planning and execution management according to critical chain. So um, yeah, let's have fun in the next minutes. I will show you through the Excel and all the features. Okay, um, in this second part of the tutorials of the how to's for the critical chain project management in an Excel, it's all about the buffer. The buffer is a central element of the critical chain project management and it's, and it's all about taking care of this buffer. Um, but you have to explain in advance where this buffer is coming from, so I will show a little theory about that and then of course in the critical chain Excel um, how it looks like there. If it comes to buffers, then you always have the problem that no one really wants to tell about the buffers he has in his work packages. Uh, that's a psychological problem and it's all because we are trained like this. We have to deliver reliable and therefore we have to do some buffer into our work packages estimations. Um, but in reality it's like this. Um, on the x-axis it's the estimate, uh, very often done in days or something like that. Um, and on the uh, y-axis in this graph you see the relative probability, so um, how probable is a value. There are two interesting points. The optimistic one, that is uh, the smallest ever possible estimate uh, that will never occur because it has a relative probability of zero. On the other side, um, disruptions, delays or whatever you can imagine a lot. So the curve is not uh, like a bell curve, it's, it's elongated on the right side. Um, and if we are asked to do an estimate, we know that, um, but typically we estimate something around 80-90% reliable. It's a gut feeling we have. And with this 80-90% we typically feel safe. So that's the reality, so typically we, we estimate 80-90%. Re uh, absolute probability. But out of the point of view of a project planning, the 50-50 would be more interesting. So this is uh, the point where the chance is 50% that it's earlier and 50% that it's later. And if you have a chain of work packages, dependent work packages, um, these delays and these early deliveries um, can be put together and they equal out and that's typically a very, very uh, useful value. But no one estimates that. So the insights are all estimates are probabilities, it's a curve and uh, the best would be the 50-50 typically, um, but normally because we are measured on reliability we add some padding and that's normal, that's by the way fine and because um, no one really knows what the right estimation is. Um, we typically do a little trick. So we know that 50-50 would be fine um, and that means nothing else that we assume that typically one third of the estimate is buffer. No one knows and it will never be possible to measure but it's a good first guess. And that's why Critical Chain just uses this rule um, and in practice, um, the companies will learn within a few weeks um, whether this is right and typically the system, the estimates adjust themselves so it fits to this. Okay, but I will show you a little more how it looks like in project planning. So I prepared some slides to make it visual and it all starts with a generic project plan. Um, all projects start with some phase concepts and planning. So the green team you already know, um, it's a yellow team. They have to work very hard, maybe software development, maybe something different. That is the longest chain. Um, this blocks a month or weeks or whatever you want. And after doing the hard work, typically there's a phase integration tests and if that is done, bug fixing, and if that is done, the project is finished. Uh, yes, but normally projects are not like this alone. There's typically something else to do, but it's not 
the longest chain, uh, so you can start a little later. And uh, typically in the end you have something to do that you won't forget at all. So that's a very generic project plan, an iteration or something like that. It always has to look like this. To show you a little the effect with the buffers, we just remove all this uh, stuff in between. So we have a known uh, time, a real time plan, and of course the text we don't need. So and now this is uh, the unbuffered view. Um, so all the buffers are in the work packages, and you see that it's always a third and two third. I already marked it like this. That, uh, that means what we are doing in critical chain, we remove all this one third of buffer. And of course, the project plan is compressed. So it looks like a normal project plan again. So it's the same structure, the same dependencies, but uh, only two thirds of the duration. And all the rest we are putting together in the project buffer. And that's all what we do. Um, sometimes, and I just uh, give you the hint here, sometimes you have an agile path in it, mainly the main path, path, and it has some releases, and you can do the releases or sprints or whatever exactly plan like critical chain, and then you have there also um, some buffers in, and you can do it exactly like in normal plan, two third goes into the critical chain and one third goes into the buffer. So, okay, this is now the buffered view. And if you're really looking quite uh, near, then you see the blue parts are delivering with the, uh, with the orange one into the red. And that's a very critical situation, integration phase. And if one of these three is delayed, uh, the integration phase is delayed. So what we are doing in critical chain um, is typically moving these delivery chains a little um, forward in time so that we get delivery buffers or feeding chain buffers. Um, in the Excel it will be called uh, feeding chain offset. And that's a complete critical chain plan with Agile integrated. And in the next tutorials you will see um, it's all about this buffer. So we uh, critical chain heavily relies on these fever curves on the x-axis um, is a progress over time drawn and on the y-axis is a buffer consumption. So every day you will get a point in this curve um, to see uh, how much of the buffer is left. And as long as you uh, generate more progress than buffer consumption, everything's fine. In the other way, it's red and something has to be done to go back to yellow. So that's all about the buffer. So in the end, um, critical chain is very easy. You do a very normal project planning with all the derivations, estimates like ever, so with the 80-90% of course, um, then just move one third of the duration into the project buffer at the end of the project. And if you want to agile integration, um, you just do the same and uh, feeding chains were a little pulled um, forward in time so you get some additional feeding buffer and in the end the execution management is all about checking buffer consumption versus progress and that's the critical chain magic and now I will really show it in the Excel. So you remember the Excel out of the first part of the how-to tutorials um, I did not change anything, so you see uh, the conceptual work, the programming stuff, and like in the slides, it's the longest chain, you have to do some documentation, that's a blue one, and you have the end-to-end -end tests, and of course in the end the party. Um, that are the durations, and that are the uncompressed durations, so in the Gantt diagram you see the six days, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the dots here, these show the critical chain plan. That means um, out of the six days, um, it's four, four days in the real plan. One, two, three, four, and that's all. 
and this is done with all the word packages so the, the duration of 12, uh, 12 is cut down to 8 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and uh, you see here the feeding chain without an offset of course uh, because you have to do it manually and here the next word package and that's the end-to-end -end party. So, and everything between this milestone and this dot is a buffer and that is all to take care about. So nothing is changed at the due date, it's still the same, but you have one third of the project uh, critical chain as buffer and the assumption is, by the way, that always something's happening um, in the project execution. So you will consume over time your buffer. And if the project ends, you will have uh, consumed all the buffer, but you will reach um, the due date. And if one work package is earlier than expected, then it saves buffer. And if something is happening in another, it consumes buffer. Uh, I said something about the feeding chain and this is here the feeding chain. Now you can manually add a feeding chain offset, maybe two days or something like that. Um, you can update the plan and then you will see the Excel will move this a little forward in time um, and you have some additional buffer but that's all. You don't have to do much more. So in the plan you see now two days. So if this work package is delayed by two days, the critical chain will be still intact. Um, it's not very, very necessary to do this because typically in this longer work packages something occurs, delays occur, and typically the shorter um, feeding chains um, have no so much problems uh, as the critical chain. So if you leave this step out, it will work typically too. Um, one uh, small um, information. In the third part, we will talk about execution management. And that's, I, I think I did not explain it there in detail. So I just want to show it to you here. Uh, critical chain uh, uses typically two project plans. This is uh, the original plan and this is the current plan shown as dots in the Gantt diagram. And uh, the current plan is called current plan because um, in execution management if he's updated, this plan is updated regularly. So if you set, um, if a, a work package is typically not to be started or ready to start, that means planned. And in that case the Excel takes two-thirds of the duration and does the planning like a normal plan. If you put um, a work package into process, um, then already one a date is known, the start date. So in this current plan, then the start date is used as it was given by setting it in process. And the end date of a work package is today plus the remaining duration estimation. And if something is finished, then of course, the Excel takes the start and the end date um, like it was when you set in finished. And it's all described here, but the consequence is that this current plan with the current start and end dates um, is changing every time you do execution management, but this is the project plan, um, how it is in reality. Um, yes, and that's um, all about where the buffer is coming from, um, how the buffer can be seen here in the fever curve, uh, in the fever curve in the Excel, and that's a precondition for doing good execution management. Um, a small hint: the buffer must be something around 30% in the end, because if the buffer is too short, no one really um, believes in buffering. If it's too long, you will get student syndrome and stuff like this. So in practice, something between 25 and 30%, 33% is perfect fine. That's it, all about where the buffer is coming from. So now have fun with the third part, with the execution management and the feedback curve.
and uh, if you do not have the file right now um, in the in the description of YouTube you will see um, a link to a website uh, where you find also uh, a little more description and the download link or you, s you can simply send a mail to me um, and I will send to you the Excel um, and maybe if you are interested um, you can of course follow the Speed for Projects channel and in the, in the channel you will find um, a, a video list um, about the Smart Pipeliner and this is also an Excel um, that allows you to do really uh, portfolio optimization, find your bottleneck team, uh, stagger your projects and uh, find the projects that are best for the business. So uh, the Speed for Projects channel is full of interesting videos, tools, uh, click around um, yeah, and follow and if uh, you want the Excel mail or link, click. The only thing I expect is if you are using it and if you are getting in trouble, ask me for help because I'm very, very interested in having even more fever curves from different projects all over the world. Thank you for this, for your time. I hope it helped you to really use the CCPM in an Excel in the full functionality. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.